Good evening, folks in YouTube land. Uh, my name is Dylan Hackbarth. I'm one of the counselors over at Edina High School, and we're coming today with a presentation for the class of 2021. Good evening, folks um, in YouTube land. Um, a link to this presentation uh, with hyperlinks is available in the description of this video. Additionally, if you have questions, feel free to write them in the chat at the right side of the page. Um, uh, and if, thank you for joining us tonight. I'll start by introducing uh, two of my co-presenters. One is Jules, Brown, uh, Jules Block. She's entering her fourth year at Edina High School, but her 26th year as an educator. Uh, I'd also like to introduce Mr. William Hicks, Bill Hicks, who is entering his 26th year as a counselor at Edina High School. Good evening, everyone. We are so happy that you are joining us this evening in this very strange world, virtual learning, right? We want to first wish and extend our hello and wishes that everyone is healthy and well. In fact, the mantra of the evening is going to be just that, for everyone to stay healthy, well, and happy. So there are some things that we want to talk about this evening with you. And to get us started, I'm going to let you know that in college admissions world, a big verb that is being talked about is the crystal ball. And we're in uncertain times right now. And in fact, college admissions can be uncertain at times. So tonight, we're really going to focus on having us talk about things we can control rather than things we can't control. And we thought we should get together with you all tonight. And by the way, we hope that this is for junior students as well as families. So if you are in a room right now and your junior student is nearby, grab them. Or juniors, if your parents or guardians are home, grab them as well. We know that you all are busy. Perhaps juniors, you're studying for advanced placement exams or keeping up with your work. So we will have this video recorded as well as offered on our Class of 2021 website that we will show you our conversation today. We have some goals with you tonight, and we're going to start by talking about what juniors should be doing now, review activities that we've done to date, talk about a ton of different post-secondary resources as you go into the summer, and give you an opportunity, of course, for questions during these uncertain times. So I'm going to get started by talking about the fact that we are Ooh, I, I was a little echoey before, and now I'm discovering I'm not, so it's much, much better. Sorry about that. It was distracting. So as we know, we're in a really strange time right now, and I just want to give a shout-out to our junior students and all of you for your resilience. It is amazing to talk to students right now and see the positive attitude, and I, I want to point out that this is an opportunity for all of us to take a step back and for us to breathe. Maybe it's an opportunity to be balanced. And we know that there's a lot of questions out there. So we have created an, an actual resource on our high school website called Frequently Asked Questions for Distance Learning. We will repeatedly update that all the time. And things you'll find on that is perhaps maybe how to visit campuses right now virtually. Or maybe you have questions about testing by chance. College entrance again. That resource there talking about what colleges are going to do for the class of 2021, et cetera. So we're excited to offer this resource and keep updating it because we know that there's a lot of different things going on each and every day. If there's anything that's good that's coming from this whole scenario is that colleges are getting better at offering virtual ways for you to visit their campuses. So maybe it's more affordable. If there's also something that might be good from this whole scenario is that Colleges are going to be more holistic in their review of looking at students' admissions, and they're going to have less emphasis on testing. So all of this is really, really good news, and we want to point out that you all have worked really hard, students, and you're going to be a senior in a month. Congratulations. We want to celebrate that, and we want you to take a step back and keep doing what we've been talking about all year, going on that introspective journey to find that right fit for you after you graduate. What whether it's two-year, four-year community, technical college, work, gap year, you name it, we want you to find the right place for you. And so tonight, we're going to give you some resources to get into summer, to utilize, to research, and, and go and continue to be on that introspective journey as we, as we get into summer here. And so a reminder, 
all of the activities that we've done to date with juniors is on count. If you go to the My Planner tab and Tasks, every single activity that we've done to date is there. And we point that out to you right now, which is super important, because if you haven't done some of those activities, perhaps through advisory or with us, now is your time to do that. In October, we got you thinking about what's next for you with the game plan. In November, we gave you strategies to explore and discover your fit, which is loaded with resources and hyperlinks to get you thinking. In December, we had you do a super match, which is on Naviance, and you're able to answer a host of questions and land on some potential colleges that are a good match for you. In December, we gave you six strategies to build a smart post-secondary list. And then in March, before we left for all of this, we gave you some tips on how to manage the college application process. On Naviance, if you go to that My Planner tab and task, each of those PowerPoints and screencasts are there for your leisure to be able to go into summer and review those. So again, that you can come back to your senior year prepared for what's next. So as I talk about that, we are also going to point out that there's a class of 2021 tab that I'm actually going to show you in a few moments, which has every activity we've done to date, every newsletter, and every resource, including what we're doing this evening. This video, this PowerPoint, and uh, the question and answer part of the discussion will be. So students, for those of you who haven't done so yet, and for those of you who have, if you're thinking that four-year, two-year community or technical college is on the docket for you, we really encourage you to go to your Naviance account, click on the Colleges tab, and go to the Colleges I'm Thinking About, and add your colleges to that list. It's a really good graphic organizer for you, and I'll show you a live version of this, but it creates an opportunity for you to see not only what kind of application that potential college has for you, but also deadlines. So we'll show you that live here in a second. Many of you might, might have had plans to go to college campuses this spring or this summer. And right now, we just don't know what's going on. As I referenced, many colleges are doing a great job creating a better virtual experience for you. And on our distance learning resource that we have, we have a host of different virtual ways for you to visit colleges. So we're going to point that out to you in a moment as well before we get to the question and answer. In addition to that, another way to virtually explore some colleges this summer is the Minnesota State Week has been released for June 22nd to the 26th. There's a website below, and there's going to be virtual ways for you to visit Minnesota colleges, and it's free during that week. There's also a wonderful, wonderful resource called Colleges That Change Lives, which is essentially that colleges that have been noted to change students' lives. And there's a college fair that is right now planned for August 16th at the convention center. And it tends to be, it's about 44 colleges. And they tend to be smaller liberal arts colleges, but they're unbelievable as far as the experiences they offer students, matriculation in the grad school, professor relationships, you name it. So check that out. If you're wanting to get a jump start on your college applications this summer, we have a hyperlink that gives you instructions on a comprehensive college application checklist and instruction sheet. And I'll show you how to access that as well on our website. But it talks about some things such as whether or not you should use an institution's application, a common application. If you don't know some of the stuff that I'm talking about, I would also reference that you should consider looking at the Managing the College Application Screencast and PowerPoint that will kind of direct you. We're super excited. We're super excited because we also want and are thrilled to offer an opportunity. Sorry, I'm turning up my microphone here. It sounds like I needed to do that. And I'm doing that, so hopefully that helps a little bit. We have a really is Ethan Sawyer, and he's notably known as the College Essay Guy, and he is graciously offering a free college essay boot camp for our students this summer. This hyperlink brings you to their his actual website to be able to sign up. And something to note about that, some of our juniors are going to be writing a college essay, but if you really want to hone in to your college application, and especially in these times where there's going to be more emphasis on the whole student versus grades and test scores, this guy has a way of offering a way for students to tell their story in a very, very notable way that 
think about it. They're, your essay is letting them know you more so than grades and test scores. So check that out. We really encourage you to consider doing that if you have the time the week of June 1st through June 5th. So solidifying your post-secondary options into the summer. We really want you to go into summer and check out the resources we've created. It's ironic. We created a junior resource electronically for the first time ever this year. And so we have a tiny URL code as well as a QR code that you can scan and get all kinds of resources from testing to essay tips to college application recommendations to how to pay for college. So we're going to show you that as well on the web. Please know that tonight we got together because we're in strange times. We wanted to extend our wishes that you're all help, healthy and well. And we want to let you know that this is a continual conversation. We're going to give you some resources today and know that when we get back to school in the fall, we're going to meet with students right away to talk about the logistics of the college applications, their post-secondary plans, and it's an ongoing conversation. I will go backwards a little bit and say our biggest objective of the evening is not only to stick to tell juniors to stay healthy and well, but secondly, to finish authentically with your semester. What we're hearing from colleges all over the nation is that they want students to be authentic with this time, and they know that it's different and we're in an extenuating circumstance. But as you get into your senior year, your first semester grades are gonna be very important for you to be strong and doing your best academically. That's gonna tell a story of you. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you some resources here and then we're gonna open it up for questions. The reason we wanna show you the resources is because this is going to be something that you should go into the summer to look at. Right now, students' emphasis is twofold, healthy and well, and finishing their academic year. That is the most, nothing else matters if we're not healthy and well. And so we just wanna emphasize that again and again. So I'm going to quickly go up to the Dinah High School website and let you notice that there's a student services tab. When you click on that, there is a class of 2021 tab. And when you go there, everything that we've done to date is posted here to serve as a resource. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to point out that all those activities that I mentioned that are on Naviance for you Parents and guardians out there that want to look at those PowerPoints or screencasts and not have to go to your student's Naviance account, they're there. All of our newsletters are there, et cetera. I'm going to scroll back up, and I'm going to go up to the commonly asked questions during distance learning. And I want to point out a couple of things. Number one is that there's a hub through the National Association of College Admission Counseling, NACAC. If you click here, it allows a student to find out what is the college's policy right now, for example, on standardized testing when it comes to the class of 2021. You're going to find that right now, nothing more than ever, our college is going to be flexible with the class of 2021. There has always been what's called test optional schools over and every day we get more colleges saying that they are going to allow students in this class to not have to worry so much about having a test score. And I say that to all of you right now because with the mantra of staying healthy and well, you might be asking yourself, wow, is ACD, ACT going to have that June test date? And the truth is, they're going to let us know by May 22nd, supposedly. But we really want to emphasize safety and health right now. And so as a result, we don't want anybody to risk any safety or health situations. So we would encourage students to put testing aside, focus on finishing the year strong, and moving into looking at the resources we're providing here tonight for the summer. No college is gonna want students to go back this fall, hoping that we do, to look for taking a test with a race to find a test. A test is one test on one day. Your everyday performance matters more and more colleges are moving to holistic review. Another cool thing with this resource is if you click on the summer program plans, if your student, you as a junior, want to do something over the summer, there's a lot of virtual things that you can do. So check that out. If I go back to the distance learning, again, we're going to update this continually through the course of this environment. We will be finishing the 9th, and, and we as counselors will be going on a break. But as much as possible, we'll update this resource. I want to scroll down and show you, show you a resource through the testing. If you look at this particular, if you click here, it's going to show you the schools and their testing plan for the class of 2021. Again, we are over 
1,000, I believe it's 200 now, schools that are going to be test optional, not requiring our current junior class to have test scores for college admissions, which is really, really good to take the emphasis off of testing. Scrolling down a little bit, this is the virtual ways that you can look at campuses. We have a master virtual tour spreadsheet, as well as generic ways for students to visit campuses. We encourage you to look at that and really, really hone in. Many colleges are offering chats or Google Meets or things like this where you can get to know and really understand the college reps. Moving on here, summer enrichment options are here. If you're looking at different ways to do something over the summer and maybe your plans fell through, there are a lot of different virtual things that you could consider as well. And just a friendly reminder, here's another link for that College Essay Guys boot camp. So this is a virtual thing. If I go back to the Class of 2021 website, I do want to point out that resource packet that we mentioned that is essentially loaded with every resource that you can imagine from testing to college essay, name it. Moving on down here, one more thing <clears throat> would be that if I get to the Class of 2021's website, and forgive me as I clunk through a couple of clicks over here, I want to um, point out that if students are wondering about teacher recommendations, we encourage students to number one, solidify their list. And after they solidify their list to find out if they need a teacher letter of recommendation, not all colleges require one. And if they do, ask their teacher if they'd be willing and what their process is. As for counselor letters of recommendation, we simply ask that a student fill out this questionnaire and give us three weeks to write. So the earliest college admission deadlines tend to be around November 1, so we would want that packet filled out by October 1. So these are some resources that are on the Class of 2021 website. I do want to point out a really cool resource for students that are at whatever stage of their life going back, again, to the junior resource packet that we've created. If you go to the college and career readiness websites, we have, again, we're talking about Ethan Sawyer quite a bit here, College Essay Guy. He has a hub of resources from everything from how to develop a great college list all the way down on how to pay for college. So check that out. I'm going to quickly scroll over to our Naviance account, what students see and point out a couple of things, and then we're going to open it up for questions. We really wanted the most, the chunk of the time here tonight to be about that. So I'm, I'm sitting here at about 6.17, so I'm doing a good job with uh, keeping, keeping with some speed here. So if I go to this, I'm going to go to a demo student that we have, and hopefully, actually, so he's class of 2020, 2021, and his name is Eddie. And we're going to go to Mr. Eddie Schmiel. Give me as I plug in a couple more letters to get it zoned in. So Eddie's going to pop up here, class of 2021. This is what it looks like for us on our side. But I'm going to show you what it looks like for students when they log in. And a few things to note. One is back to the My Planner tab and tasks. Every activity that we've done to date as referenced is here. Eddie has a lot of things that look like they're overdue, but there really isn't a due date. You can click on this and it will link you to the PowerPoint and to the uh, screencast for that. Going to colleges, if you go to the colleges tab, the home, students can play around with some super matches to find some schools that are a good fit for them. But I'm gonna point out the colleges I'm thinking about tab. And you'll note that Eddie's interested in a lot of different schools from Augsburg all the way down to Loyola in You'll notice that this serves as a graphic orga organizer, and you might wonder, well, what does that CA mean? And that means common application. Over 800 colleges offer one application for a student to fill out and be submitted to more than one college. So students can actually start their common application now as a junior into summer, and it will roll over to them as a senior in August of, their, of this summer. You'll also notice that there's a way for students to know when their deadlines are. It serves as an organizer for them to know that Augsburg doesn't have a deadline. It's rolling. They can apply at any time all the way up until May. In fact, they're still taking students right now for our current senior class. But if you go down to Butler, you're going to notice that they have an early action opportunity for students to apply by November 1 and not be committed to that school but hear back early. Or they also offer some rolling and regular decision options there too. If we wanted to see what does it look like for Eddie 
as far as his admission chances. If you click on that college, this is a great way for Eddie to communicate with getting in touch with Edina Rep, who's Jenna Hauser. So students can start to establish a relationship with colleges there. They can also click on the admissions tab and see since 2012, how many students from Edina have applied and how many have been accepted. And if you scroll even, even further down, you're gonna see that Eddie has a really good chance of being admitted to Augsburg based and statistics we have here. So we just wanted to point out some resources for students to start putting some college that they're thinking about, adding and subtracting. The goal right now would be for students to stay healthy and well, finish academically strong, and move into the summer to start to narrow down some options. And we will work with them and you as students to continue to talk about this and talk about solidifying a smart list of schools. And when we say smart, we mean schools that meet your academic, financial, personal, and social needs, and that are schools that you feel super confident about, and then you go for your dream schools. Sometimes we hear students talk about safety schools or reach schools. We like to call it high, medium, and low, low chance of admission. If you're covering your bases with having schools that you have a high chance of admission, you can go for schools that have a lower chance of admission. We have to point out to all of you that if you want to go to college, you can go. The average acceptance rate at four-year colleges is 70%. There's only 113 schools out there that have an admission rate below 33%. So remember that. Be empowered by this process. Be excited by it. Take a step back and go on a journey. And again, we wanted to get in front of you today because we were getting some of the same questions. And as we're talking with our juniors, they wanted to know the resources and have a touch point. So that was our purpose. So I've shown you quite a bit here. I'm going to exit out of my screen if I may. As I do that, I'm going to go back to am I out of there right now? Okay, perfect. So I think we're going to open it up here for questions, everyone. Again, I was on a little bit of a tangent um, away from my screen. So now I'm able to see some heads, my colleagues. Hi, colleagues. So we're going to answer your questions. What do we got? And this might be a little clunky, folks. Um, I want to be honest. I'm, I'm running, and we're in the same room. Um, and so I want to make sure that we're not too echoey. So I will kind of moderate the, moderate the questions and throw them out to some of my colleagues. I'm going to be you know, stingy, and I'm going to take the first one. And I think Ms. Block answered this question already. Is the June ACT canceled? Well, um, I think as Ms. Block said during our discussion, uh, we will know by May 22nd, ACT will make an announcement whether or not they're canceled. Um, so be checking your emails, checking their website. Um, at this point, we don't have an answer for you. Sorry. Uh, oh, I got to got to mic you. Good. If I may, I just want to add that our district right now is considering whether or not we would con consider having it. And I, I believe that they're trying to the safety and minds of all of our students. And, and again, I would err on the side of safety first right now. And there's no reason to have to take a June date, especially with the flexibility right now and with the uncertainties of our time. So I think if there's anything that we can say to all of you right now, it, it would be don't focus on testing. Don't focus on the testing scenario or scene right now. Put that aside. Um, all right, folks. So I'm going to throw this next question over to Mr. Hicks. Sorry, we realize now you can see us. Um, so get your laughs in. Um, okay, coming from Jasmine, if I understood you correctly, you said that first semester senior year will be extra important for applications. How does that work for early applicants that apply in the fall? I'm going to stick send that over to you, Mr. Hicks. Thanks, Dylan. And first and foremost, welcome everybody and uh, thanks for being here tonight. The question that uh, is brought forth in regards to early application, I think the, the first and most important part of that where it's the question is be extra important for applications in the first semester. Every semester is important. So your first semester grades of your senior year are just as important as your grades are now as we're last semester and the previous semesters. So it doesn't matter. I wouldn't say it's any more extra important at the beginning of next year for your grades. It's as important as previously as well as moving forward. Anyway, <clears throat> 
the early application process historically has been roughly the first of November. There are some schools out there that have an October 15th early um, application, early action, um, and early decision deadline. But for the most part, the majority of them are November 1st. And obviously in a typical school year, our semester doesn't get done until January. Um, and so the grades would not be sent to the college until at that time. So schools that do early admission, early action, early decision will base their decision on the grades that they've had from the transcript from ninth grade through 11th grade without senior grades. However, with that being said, there are colleges that will might that will want grades at the semester so they'll be requesting a mid-year report before they make a final decision and those 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 decisions will then be made in february um, with first semester grades on i again i want to reiterate my point in saying that first semester grades aren't any more important than the previous grades every grades are every grade per semester is important and that's what students should be focusing on at the present time as well as moving into next year anything else to add to that miss block sure i would add just a couple more things we have been in conversation with colleges as we've broke for this different scenario that we're playing out right now, distance learning in, in a health crisis, et cetera. And again, there are a lot of colleges don't have the answers. One of the reasons why your first semester would be important is because of the fact that they might be removing testing from the scenario. So again, as Mr. Hicks said, first, first semester of senior year, mid-year transcripts or grades to date might be more important. And that's them again, looking at you as a, as a whole person and how you're doing your classes versus a test score. And Ms. Block, we'll throw, Jules, we'll throw the next one right back to you. When should we start asking teachers about letters of recommendation? Well, great question. I will start with what I said before, and that is the best scenario for you is to narrow down your list and find out if you need them. Not all colleges require a letter of recommendation at all. And if they do, most of them require maybe one teacher letter of rec. Very few colleges require two. So if you need one. And if you do, consider talking with your teachers this spring about what their policy is. Some might want to know if you want a letter of recommendation so they can prepare and plan for how to be able to spend some time writing a good letter for you next year. On the class of 2021 website, there is a teacher recommendation questionnaire you can fill out. Some teachers will say to you, hey, fill that out for me so I can write a really good letter for you. As I pointed out, for council recommendations, there's a, a rec request form there as well. So again, it would be starting with A, if you need one, and then B, talking with at least one teacher now about what their policy or practice is. If you do not do that, do not worry at all. We just would say, give your letter writer three weeks as you come back to school before your deadline. So always work backwards. So don't fret if you don't have your list solidified yet. It would be better to have your list solidified before you ask a teacher to write a letter because it is time consuming. Your teachers don't work in the summer and that sort of thing. So solidify your list is probably the best route and then ask your teachers. Thank you, Ms. Block. I'll take the next one really quick. How do we uh, take the ACT with as minimal risk as possible, especially since we have to go into an actual test center to take it? question um, and maybe one that is a little bit out of our wheelhouse in terms of the biological safety. Um, with that being said, take the precautions that are being recommended, wear a mask, um, assuming that the tests are running, um, do your best to keep your distance. Um, but in addition to that, make sure that you're checking um, the ACT website, checking your email that you use to register because um, these things are moving really fast and, and frankly, it, we could say something today and it could be different tomorrow or really in an hour. So make sure that you're continuing to check the websites. And again, for the ACT, um, by May 22nd, the ACT will make a decision on whether or not they're going to be running. But in addition to that, um, different test sites might have their own rules. Um, I think Mr. Hicks made a motion, so I'm going to kick it over to him. Well, I was just going to say, Dylan, that uh, I know that you know, College Board is doing the AP testing, you know, at home at the present time. And there's been discussion with ACT as well about doing that. So again, you know, 
we're in such unknown times at the present time that who knows what's going to be, you know, taking place. But there has been discussion in regards to that. And right now, I think, like we've said before, the emphasis should be finishing out the school year as strong as you possibly can and, and kind of just play the, the, that test game, just keeping abreast of what's going on. So. Yeah, if I could add, and great question, by the way. And I think anytime we have to worry about risk, you have the answer, you know? And I think I want to emphasize that over and over. A few of us did a webinar last week with very notable college admission folks, including the director of what's called fairtest.org, which is on that distance resource we talked about. And again, all of the colleges understand the certainty and the uncertainty of what, what we're living right now. And so health and safety is number one. And if you have to question that, don't do it because nothing matters if you're not healthy. The second thing is that they were talking about as we move into the fall, there could be a shift with what testing looks like, a little less emphasis on it, thankfully, as well as the fact that, like Mr. Hicks said, they're looking at maybe different testing options such as online testing or what have you. But I think we want to send the message to all of you that none of this should be about racing to find a way to take a test at all. Colleges are going to be super flexible. They're going to realize the state of affairs you've been in. They want you to be authentic, and they want you to find your right fit college. In fact, Trinity College was on this website that I was on or this webinar, and they were saying there's no scarcity in college admissions. Be able to find a seat, and it's not going to be about your test scores. They're going to really be looking at you holistically a lot more now, which I think is really good. There's a huge article by the National Association of College Admission Counselors talking about this is a great time, if anything, to get rid of testing. And if I have full disclosure, and for those of you who know me, if that ever happens, I'll be super happy because it's, you know, again, it's kind of a, a stressor for our students. And I think there's a lot, other, lot of other ways to make admissions decisions without looking at a test score. That said, we are in that world still. But I would encourage you to go to that website, fairtest.org, or that distance learning resource, and you'll be amazed at how many colleges, even Harvard, if you've heard of that, it's in Massachusetts, it's a, it's a pretty selective school. They have said, if you can't take a test, we understand. If you have one, send it. If not, I mean, more and more colleges realize where, we're, where we are today, and, and we can't be focused on trying to take a test. Since we're, since we're on testing, I'll, oops, wrong one. Um, I wanted to quick pop over to this question. What's going on with the SAT? Everyone talks about the ACT, but I haven't seen test dates for the SAT. Um, I'm actually the person who coordinates the SAT that's delivered on Saturdays at Edina High School. And um, back in early April, late March, um, College Board actually canceled um, the rest of the SATs for uh, this school year. So the June SAT was canceled. And then they added a date. Um, the fall. So uh, at this point, they're planning an SAT one weekend in August, September, October, November, and December. Uh, yeah, let me find another question for us. May, uh, may, may I add something? Me, really? Yep, go for it. Just a clarification. Great question, by the way. And I just want to differentiate the fact that the ACT and SAT are accepted by all colleges. And I think we've talked about the ACT a little bit more because we have allowed our students to have a national school-based test with the ACT. That said, we encourage students, you know, again, we're talking about testing, and, and again, don't let that be a stressor for you. But one of the things we recommend is take a practice test, see which one you're naturally better at, and stick with it. Sometimes people in our community think you have to take the SAT and the ACT and the SAT and the ACT, and it's better to just be authentic and take one, see how you do, and colleges will take the better of the scores usually. And again, your class is going to be a, a, a changer. I believe that testing is gonna be less emphasized as I've said over and over again. But I just wanted to clarify that students don't have to go out trying to take both tests or both college entrance exams. It's better to just focus on one. And generally students have taken the ACT more often just because we've offered it into our school for all juniors to take, which as you know, was canceled this year. Throwing over to Mr. Hicks. All right, Dylan, <clears throat> thanks. Um, so the boot camp that the counseling department was going to put forth this summer, there was actually two sessions. One was in June and one was in August, um, put on through the community education, 
program. Um, we were just notified recently from Community Ed that all programming for the month of June has been terminated. So the the summer boot camp that we had um, originally planned um, for June has been canceled, and there we're working on a potential makeup for that in the month of August. So we're looking at previously there were two weeks one was in june and one was in august we're looking at the two camps being held in august they haven't the the decision for both of those because that there is so much emphasis on interpersonal work that we probably couldn't have done it online so we were looking more so through um doing without virtually so we were going to look at uh, the dates in august so presently the June camp has been uh, canceled and we're looking at opportunities in the month of August for holding that session at that time. Again, like colleges and like, like all of us that were in this situation, we're kind of on hold and we probably will know more within the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye and ear out from any direction that you're going to get from community education in regards to the programming that was done through the counseling office for students. Now I'm going to go to a student question. Um, great question, by the way. Besides essay practice writing or, or crafting that personal statement, what else can I virtually learn to make the most of my summer? So I'm, I'm thinking you might be talking about how can you prepare for your applications in the fall? I'm going to throw this one over to you, Ms. Block. Perfect. Well, what a great question. I, I actually am interpreting then that potentially two ways. I hear you talking about virtually learning in general. And as I referenced on that distance learning, that very, very top paragraph, the NACAC hub offers opportunities for students to get some summer opportunities or virtual experiences. And there's some summer enrichment options that are now moving to, to virtual um, to learn in different areas, such as engineering or business or you name it. So if that's what you were referring to, I would encourage you to check those websites out because there's there really are a lot of things that you could be doing. If you're talking about your college application and virtual ways to learn, I would encourage you to go to the junior packet that we referenced and click on that college essay guys hub. And he's got a lot of different ways on there to start going on an introspective dive. No matter where you are at in the college application process, there's a lot of different ways to do that. If you haven't watched all of our PowerPoints and presentations, I would encourage you to do that or to virtually go on and do some super matches and look at some of those websites that are out there to get you really narrowing down on your college application as far as your best fit colleges. And if you are already farther along and have established some schools that you're thinking about, we would encourage you to consider starting your common application this summer. Again, it'll shift over to you as a senior August 1st, but you can really get started. And by doing that, and also maybe working on your essay, you're going to be able to figure out ahead of the game and ready with some applications and just fine tuning them as you look at whatever deadlines your colleges offer. So again, I, I think checking all those resources that I kind of scrolled through at the beginning would be super helpful for you to virtually create college application help. And again, if it's summer learning that you're wanting, those other resources too. And just a reminder, um, we linked this presentation uh, that Ms. Block uh, went through earlier on. So you can find all of the links, including the access to the class of 2021 uh, resource Google folder. Um, so if you wanna access those resources, they're all there for you as well. We'll throw the next one out there. How do we get letters of recommendation and transcripts um, for an early decision application at, of deadline of July at a college we are looking at? Well, I'll first say um, the National Association for College Admissions Counseling kind of sets the dates that uh, colleges, the earliest that colleges can make their due dates. And I believe from NACAC, the, and guys, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, October 15th is typically the earliest early decision uh, deadline. And so typically our students would uh, wait till the fall uh, because we're not even set up to send transcripts. And uh, we're really not set up to do that until early September. Um, so we typically have students wait. Anyone else have something to say on that question? Sure. 
So great question. I think there's a lot of rumors out there about some colleges saying the earlier you apply, there, there are a few schools that launch or open their application in July, Iowa State being one of them, where you can literally apply and be accepted because you self-report your grades. But again, there aren't any deadlines in July. And I think there's some people out there that think the sooner the better. And, and the, the fact of the matter is that there's also when school starts. And so we as a, as a counseling staff, as, as a department, as working in tandem with students and parents and such, there's a process to be able to send school materials. So we have to make sure that a student's schedule is set so that we send that appropriately, along with whether there be letters of rec, the school profile, uh, the student's transcript, etc. So typically what we do is we meet with our seniors right away in the fall and give them all the logistics on what we call the infamous pink sheet. It's the official transcript request form. So we allow them to know how to request all of their materials and we process them. And, and so we really don't really start sending off materials and until around September because that's when we have everything ready. So again, some of the folks out there might be thinking, well, gosh, I can apply to this school in July. Uh, how can I get my stuff? And certainly a lot of those sessions, so they're self-reporting. And there are some students out there that say, well, if I get my stuff into Madison right away, then I might get admitted. And I think those are some misconceptions. Um, Madison uh, is one example, or the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. They know that we come back to school for the first time ever this year, we came back before Labor Day. So we will meet with students and rest assured we'll get them appropriately out. Uh, Madison and the University of Minnesota, for example, have November 1 early action deadlines. So, you know, there's plenty of time for students to get everything done right and appropriately. So I hope that answers that question a little bit. And we'll keep moving here. Um, do you have a sense of what percentage of high schools across the country have moved to pass fail? How will this affect Edina kids who, who will be graded on distance learning work this semester? Um, I'm going to throw that one over to Mr. Billy Hicks. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Um, I don't know if I have an exact percentage, but I would say that there is a tremendous amount of, of schools out there at the present time that are looking at doing that, you know, looking and, and uh, talking to other school districts within the Twin Cities area, a vast majority of them have gone to the pass fail option. Um, and so that it's, it's out there, it's being discussed. Um, I know that uh, we, we all have been in contact with other schools across the country and same thing. Uh, high schools are in a we're in a, in a time that like no, none other. And so that uh, they're all looking to, to make sure that it's a fair and equal system within each of the school systems. So I don't know if I can give you an exact percentage, but I would say a large percentage of high schools have talked about it and probably will enact something for their students uh, because of the distance learning that's, that's taking place this, this year and potentially even next, next fall. And just adding on to that from Mr. Hicks, well said, very well said. I will say two things. One is from the college's perspective, they're going to understand that you're only as good as the environment for which you're in right now. So I'm not saying that your grades right now don't matter, but there's going to be some flexibility about that. I will also say that we as a, as a department, as well as a student support team met today and, and our district's in conversation. They haven't Hey, they haven't landed on it yet, so stay tuned. There could be some conversation about that. Um, we don't know specifics right now, and we're not trying to divulge anything, but we, we certainly want students. I think the driving question is, are you able to get the grade that you would have learned had you been in school with all your resources? So our district is thinking about that. And, and I, I again, I think just stay tuned to your emails, your Schoology pages, et cetera, and, and we want to help you. And if you're finding, if any of you out there right now are finding that your grades are not what they should be and what they would have been, please reach out to your counselor because we will act as an advocate to make sure that you are not getting a grade that you are not, I mean, I'm it's kind of stumbling in my words. We want to make sure that you're getting a grade that you should, you would have gotten had you been in school. Great. Um, let's see. And don't, guys, we've got about 15 minutes left, so don't be afraid to keep throwing questions in. This is um, going better. I don't know about you guys. It's going better than I thought it would. So yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Uh, what are you hearing from schools about uh, what going to college will look like in the fall of 2020 and beyond due to COVID? Um, is it all going to be online distance learning on campus housing? Who wants this one? I'll take that one. Go for it. Such a superb question for sure. And I think, again, it's we don't have the crystal ball for that, nor do the colleges. I think it's all the state of affairs on the health and safety of all of our, our students in our communities. There right now is on the distance learning resource, believe it or not, it's there's a chronicle in which schools have decided what they're doing. But again, they're kind of mandated by, obviously, the state and the governors and things like that. What we will say is there's probably three scenarios that are going to play out. One would be that they open, which is awesome and phenomenal, and wouldn't that be great? The second one is maybe offering a hybrid of, of opportunities for students to do partial classroom, partial online. Um, there's been talks about having some students some days and, and different things like that. And the last one is to have it be online altogether. So I think, it, again, if you're in an environment right now where you also have a senior and you're thinking about that, that distance learning resource is keeping you up apprised to what colleges are saying about that. Um, right now, it's TBD to be determined, the infamous word TBD. So um, just, and I, and I think don't hesitate to talk to college admission folks. I mean, if a hybrid learning environment doesn't sound good for a student, um, some students are, are altering their plans, quite frankly. And so um, it's, it's just, all of it is uncertain. And I think Mr. Hicks might have something to add for that one, maybe from. I, I feel good about that answer, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, this is interesting. Have you heard from colleges on the impact of 2020 to 2021 acceptances? Anyone have that crystal ball? No, please go, Bill. Oh, one second, Bill. One second. I was, was going to say that uh, just recently I was in conversation with the director of admissions at the University of Minnesota, and they have as many questions as we do in regards to this. They don't know. I mean, they can tell you as of, you know, this past week that they've had so many deposits, but they don't know whether or not the students will follow through with that. Um, this is uncharted territory for them as much as it is for us and for you in regards to what's going to happen. So they, they're anticipating that uh, their classes are going to be roughly the same. Uh, they obviously they they would love to have them as large as what they anticipate prior to this COVID nineteen uh, pandemic. But you know they don't know, and so that at the, at the present time, um, they're they're playing. And uh, I would probably tell you that more is going to be known within the next couple of weeks because time is of essence in regards to them making decisions in regards to what. You know, that they'll be looked at, uh, what it's going to look like in the fall for their students. So, you know, the, the students were going to have to make decisions and, and have made decisions already, but we'll continue to make decisions um, moving forward. Now, they don't know. So, so something to point out, I think also uh, the concern was maybe the impact it might have on the class of 2021. And again, I, I know we keep saying this and it's just, there's not an answer to that. There was a really good article by a, a guy that we respect a ton from Georgia Tech talking about the fact that I think we have to differentiate what deferrals mean. Many colleges are not offering a deferral opportunity. And if they do, Deferring means that you're taking a year off to do something productive. And so a lot of times they're wanting to know what that looks like to give you that year and then to come back with a seat. Um, I think we have to differentiate what a gap year looks like in, in the past. Um, gap year, maybe back in the day was, ooh, I'm taking a year off. But now there's been a lot of programs out there where students do something. But if a student does defer from the class of 2020, they cannot then go to a different college. So we want to clarify that. So. As a result of that, the class of 2021 shouldn't be impacted too much because most of the schools out there are always worried about filling their freshman class to begin with. And now we're in a different state of affairs. I believe a statistic out there at one point was 60% of the college admission folks are nervous that they're not going to fill their freshman class. And yes, we're in a different state of affairs, but 
again, I referenced this earlier, I was on a, a webinar with a consortium of colleges and every one of them said there will not be a scarcity for the class of 2021 to find a viable and wonderful place to go and learn. So um, we've had a few other comments about pass fail. I just wanna say um, if there's any specific concerns about that, um, I think there's a question about like how do students determine if they were weren't getting the grade they normally would have gotten without before um, this COVID situation. If there are specific concerns about that, I really encourage you to inquire with your counselor directly. Um, uh, we're, we're your advocates and support system. And so we can help talk through if there are specific concerns about that. Um, uh, let's see guys, it looks like our questions are kind of drying up. I'm wondering if there are any additional points of uh, recommendation or kind of sage words of advice to leave our crowd with. Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Mr. Hicks if I can find my mouse. Here we go. All right, thanks, Dylan. Uh, just just to kind of summarize a few things and and, and just mention, Jules has talked about over the course of the evening. Um, what can you do? after school is over with what can you do during the summertime i mean there's a ton of stuff in the summer now that potentially you won't have a schedule as busy as what you probably previously would have had but students you can review over such things as the essay prompts you can go on to the common app and look at the essay prompts there's been an additional essay prompt on the common app uh, that's dealing with how are you handling things right now uh, start drafting essays, that's a possibility. As Jules mentioned before, virtual tours are, are out there and they probably are, have never been better um, than what they were previously. So um, seeing a college campus through a virtual tour is, uh, is gonna be as good as it's gonna get at the present time. So take advantage of the time that you have. You can research, research scholarships, research financial aid websites. Those are all opportunities that uh, if you've got a little bit of time, you can uh, take advantage of. Um, there's plenty of webinars, and I'm sure there'll be many more webinars over the course of the summertime that they'll be talking about. And keeping yourself abreast of what's going on is, is probably the most important thing. I know it's you know disappointing of what has transpired in regards to your education, but keeping yourself up to schools and and what is happening in in, in uh, you know post-secondary education is extremely important. As far as parents are concerned, if there are parents out there obviously listening, um, my comments to you would be, you know, support your student, but enjoy your time together now. I mean, uh, you need to be supportive. It, it, you're going through, they're going through time that uh, is uncertain. So we need to be uh, supportive of one another and, and enjoy the time that you have together. Um, and have honest conversations. There's nothing more important than being honest with your uh, son or daughter or student in regards to their, their future plans. Um, understanding where you are, where they are is, is extremely important. And ultimately keeping options open, um, keeping all options that are open and available to, to each and every one of you. So just a couple words of advice and I, you know, as I said before, no one knows what the, the new normal is going to look like. And uh, um, just uh, as, as we talked about, stay calm and, and, and do the best that you can and uh, keep up to date with what's, uh, what's happening. So we wish you the best. We have a, a late question that I think um, we might be able to address. Um, and it is just really quick. I've heard that great test scores um, are tied to financial aid. Uh, how do you see financial aid playing out without test scores? Wow, we have such a sophisticated crowd. I tell you, I'm always impressed, always, always, always. And again, I just that just makes me want to also say we are always so proud of our students and our families. Just kudos to y'all. Uh, this this question, all of you, I mean, just our school is great because of our students. So in regards to financial aid being played out with test scores, that's a really, really good question. And I would not have you hesitate by asking admissions if they are test optional, if that has any 
at all impact on what's called merit-based scholarships. So merit-based scholarships are sometimes given to students who don't have need, and it might be tied to a test score and a certain GPA. In fact, many colleges have a matrix that says if you have this certain GPA and this certain test scores, we're going to give you this amount of money. And so the question would be, as we move to many schools being test optional, are they going to have another way of determining merit-based scholarships? The answer to that by most colleges I've talked to is yes, but I would not, I would encourage you to have conversations with colleges and I would add on to what Mr. Hicks, what Bill was saying, as far as right now, don't hesitate to reach out to the admission reps. I showed you quickly, but on Naviance, if you have colleges I'm thinking about, and click on communicate, we try to update who the diner rep is for colleges. So don't hesitate to reach out to admissions or to financial aid offices about how they're going to handle non-need-based scholarships. That's a phenomenal question. Sure. So we just want to take a moment to thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, I think that's pretty much the end of our questions. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to work with you and your students. Um, even in these uncertain times, it's uh, nice to have the consistency of, of having our amazing Edina community. So with that, we will uh, leave you all. And again, we want to thank you for your time tonight.